so we come to the um, infrared spectroscopy now as the name infrared spectroscopy suggests that the radiation uh, coming under the infrared have less energy and they are not able to bring about electronic transition when they pass through an organic molecule so in fact they bring about vibrational excitation so what is vibration it is a to and fro motion and because of this phenomena the ir spectroscopy is also known as the vibrational spectroscopy so each vibration results in a peak in the ir spectrum and each peak corresponds to a covalent bond in a organic molecule so basically the ir spectrum analysis helps to determine the structure of a organic compound it helps us to determine the different functional groups that are present in the organic compound now all vibrations uh, they do not give about a peak in the ir spectrum that means what are the conditions that should be required for a molecule to absorb ir radiation and after absorption of the ir radiation not all vibrations will bring about a peak in the ir spectrum so what are the different conditions so first of all the organic molecules should be covalent so that means covalent bonds they actually behave like stiff springs now like ionic bonds they are very very strong bonds so they can never absorb ir radiation and after and they can never vibrate but the covalent bonds because they are like springs they after absorption of the ir radiation they start to vibrate when they absorb the ir radiation so the second condition is that the frequency of vibration should be equal to the energy of the incident radiation we very well know e is equal to h mu now the third condition is that the frequency of the incident radiation should be equal to the frequency at which the vibration takes place the fourth condition is that the why all such vibrations do not bring about a peak in the ir spectrum so the only those vibrations which bring about a change in the dipole moment of the particular bond or the molecule only those vibrations show a peak in the ir spectrum so what is a dipole moment it is a the op two opposite charges when they are separated by a distance is known as a dipole so that means a symmetric molecule or a symmetric covalent bond will have no dipole moment so that means symmetric bonds or symmetric molecules they will never absorb ir radiation so first of all there should be a dipole moment and second is that after vibration the vibration should bring about a change in the dipole moment so these two conditions should be fulfilled for a vibration to show a peak in the ir spectrum so what are ir active molecules those molecules which absorb ir radiation or those molecules which show a peak in the ir spectrum are known as the ir active molecules first condition is that the molecule should be covalent second is it should have a permanent dipole moment third is that there should be a change in the dipole moment after the bond absorbs the radiation now carbon dioxide is one such molecule which does not have a permanent dipole moment but still is ir active so this is a exception and oxygen nitrogen hydrogen they are examples of symmetric molecules and hence they are ir inactive now the vibrations are of two types one is the stretching vibration another is the bending vibration stretching vibration is if the vibration is taking place along the bond axis now there are two types of stretching vibration one is the symmetric another is the asymmetric symmetric vibrations means that if the vibration is taking place in the same direction this is the two covalent bonds and the and the stretching is taking place across the bond length and it is in the same direction asymmetric stretching is that the vibration taking place along the bond length is in the opposite direction now bending vibration if there is a change uh, in the bond angle the vibration taking place brings about a change in the bond angle those are called as the bending vibration so that there are four types of bending vibration one is in plane plane rocking another is in plane scissoring now in plane rocking and in plane scissoring takes place Uh, the vibrations take place in the same plane and 
the if the vibration is taking place in the same direction and bringing about a change in the bond angle this is a in plane rocking but if the vibration is taking place in the opposite direction then it is known as in plane scissoring the next is coming the out of plane wagging and out of plane twisting and the vibrations are taking place in two different planes or two different di directions so one is your out of plane wagging means that the vibration is taking place in the same plane whereas out of plane twisting is taking the vibration is taking place in two opposite uh, planes in all such vibrations they are bringing about a change in the dipole moment hence all these vibrations will show a peak in the ir spectrum now this is the ir region so in the electromagnetic spectrum the ir region is divided into three regions one is the near mid and the far ir now it is the here you see the near middle and the far and these are the corresponding wavelength wave number and the frequencies now wave number it's a new terminology used in the ir is it is the inverse of the wavelength and in the ir region or in the ir spectrum we use this terminology more frequently as compared to wavelength and frequency so the middle ir region it is the most frequently used during the uh, structural elucidation of organic molecules because this is the region where maximum absorption takes place so we come to the ir spectrum so after uh, knowing the principle we should be able to know how to interpret the ir data so first of all the spectrum is nothing but the graph of absorbance versus the wave number and wave number is the inverse of the wavelength and the wave number it's ranging from 4000 to 400 per centimeter so this is the x axis so x axis is spanning from 4000 to 400 per centimeter and this is the middle ir region now two important regions are very vital in the ir spectrum one is the functional group region another is the fingerprint region now what is this functional group region it is the frequency region between 4000 to 1300 per centimeter so the entire ir spectrum is 4000 to 400 now if you divide this into two one is the 4000 to 1300 that belongs to the functional group region now uh, irrespective of an organic molecule the different functional groups that are present in an organic molecule are present in this region so if you know the frequency of each functional group and the, the, if, if you know the data and this data is already there in the database so if you are running a unknown organic molecule and by knowing the peak frequencies you can identify the different functional groups present in that particular organic molecule now next is coming the fingerprint region this is the region from 1300 to 400 per centimeter and this region helps us to determine the or helps us to identify a unknown organic substance we very well know that our our fingerprints are unique to us so that means no two compounds however closely related can have identical or superimposable bands in this region so this is the ir spectrum of a uh, typical ir spectrum this is how a ir spectrum looks like and this ir spectrum of this particular compound 3 ethoxy 4 hydroxy benzaldehyde now here this graph is the y axis is uh, showing the relative transmittance you can also show relative absorbance and the x axis is the wave number and it is spanning from 4000 to 400 and the region from 4000 to 1300 is the finger functional group region so th and the 1300 to 400 is the fingerprint region so that means all the different types of functional groups present in a particular compound organic compound will be showing a peak in this particular region so each peak is it corresponds to a particular covalent bond in this particular compound and the fingerprint region it helps us to identify what the name of this compound now this is the fingerprint region of the this is the ir spectrum of formaldehyde and we know that how many types of, uh, of uh, covalent bonds are there it is a ch2 it is c double bond o these are the typical 
uh, covalent bonds present in this particular compound. So let us see the peaks here. So the peaks are CH2 asymmetric stretch, stretch and this is at a frequency of 2850 per centimeter. This is a symmetric uh, CH2 symmetric stretch corresponding to 2785 per centimeter. <clears throat> this is a C double bond O stretch corresponding to 1750 per centimeter. And these are some other peaks that are present in this compound. <clears throat> so, if we know the uh, peak frequency of the different functional groups, we will be able to identify the different functional groups that are present in an unknown organic compound by the position of the peaks. So lastly, we are coming to the application of IR spectroscopy. The IR spectroscopy has far more better uses as compared to a UV vest spectroscopy. So first application is that we can identify an unknown compound from the fingerprint region. Second is the identification of functional groups in organic molecules from the functional group region. Third is we can distinguish between inter and intramolecular hydrogen bonding. Fourth is we can determine the structure because it gives valuable information regarding molecular symmetry, dipole moment, bond length, bond strength. And lastly, IR spectroscopy is also used widely for the detection of impurities for the production of many chemicals on an industrial scale. So that means if you are going, if you are producing chemicals on an industrial scale, so most likely that there should be impurities in those chemicals. So IR spectroscopy helps us to detect the such impurities. Now for example, a small quantity of ketone in a hydrocarbon is detected by the appearance of a band at 1720 per centimeter, which is the characteristic frequency of a carbonyl group. So that means the hydrocarbon, if, it, if, a, if your compound is a total hydrocarbon, so hydrocarbons do not have any functional group excepting the CH. So if you see, a, uh, you know your compound is a hydrocarbon, but if you are getting a peak at 1720 per centimeter, so this 1720 per centimeter, it's a characteristic frequency of a carbonyl group. So if you are getting such peak in a pure compound like hydrocarbon, so you will automatically know that there are some impurities present in the hydrocarbon. So these are all the applications of IR spectroscopy. Ho hope you have understood the basic principle of IR spectroscopy as well as the application. Thank you.